Hi, my name is Beth Koska. I'm an oceanography and environmental science teacher at Midtown High School in Atlanta, Georgia, with the Atlanta Public School System. Today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about CuriePod, and I got to say, it's one of the most magic um, instructional resources that I use. So um, CuriePod is an awesome AI tool for teachers to create interactive um, classroom presentations, both from scratch and from existing slides, but that's not the real magic of CuriePod. The CuriePod's magic is that you can have students enter open-ended questions and models and then provide feedback and vote for each other's models as to which one is the most accurate or rep best represents the student's thinking. So this provides a lot of opportunity for engagement and accountability in the classroom. So let's get started. Um, so first, if it's a CuriePod is a free program. And so in your Google, you will just type Google in CuriePod and you'll see CuriePod comes right up. Sign up. It's free. Click on that. And so then you're going to answer a few questions, right? I'm a teacher. Next, go ahead and answer those questions. And I already have an account, so I'm going to log in here real quick. So once you've logged in and created your account, this is your landing page for CuriePod. And we can talk about using their many features, but right now I want to show you the easiest way to jump in and get started in my favorite features. So what I'm going to have you do is go up here in the upper right, create a lesson. And then once you've done that, you have a couple options. You can either generate with AI or you can create your own lesson. I'm going to have you create your own lesson and you get these options. You have activities of open, an open-ended question, drawing question, drawing activity, a poll, creating a word cloud. And then we also have some AI feedback opportunities that we'll talk about either later or in another video. Going here and clicking on open-ended question. And so for this one, you give them a certain amount of time to write their answer. So I tend to like the two minutes. It depends on how focused your students are in your classroom. Make sure you change it to one answer. And then we are going to have participants vote at the end, right? So in this case, vote for most relevant answer, okay? And the vote duration will be a minute 30. So. I'm going to go ahead and type in my open-ended question. I'm going to pull that from previous class we did here. And paste that in. And now I'm going to present. Okay. And so for my students, they're joining now with the code here at the top, curie.live. And the last code will be 57204. I'm going to sneak over to the student side, enter 57204, join. Again, we have to write our real name and a gener auto generated nickname will come. I get awesome walk. And now I just have to go back as a teacher to remember to click go. So now I'm going to click go. I'm not using the QR code, so I click here, and we click go. And now students will type in their open-ended answer. I like to reiterate and remind students that others will be reading this, so put in details and examples. So I'm going to grab this from a previous student assignment and go back to what the student sees. So this is what the student sees, and I can just click here and type it in. and submit. Okay. So now I go back to a, our student view. Pretty ready. Okay. And I find my students are ready early, so I'm going to hit the red end button. You'll see it counts down. And then here, if you want to skip voting because of timing or um, you just decided not to use it, you can click skip voting. But we're going to go ahead and answer, click on the five answers. Here we go. Here's our vote. Again, my favorite part of this because it gives students opportunity to be, um, this allows for students to be more engaged and also have accountability in responding to their answers. I usually remind the students not to go for the longest one. Pick the one that meets what you agree with the most. 
So what is the problem of plastic in the ocean? And so again, they read them and they answer which one they believe with the best. So let's see here. All right, so I voted. Now we'll go back to the teacher page. And okay, here we go. We can see here which ones um, students voted for the most. So this is the best part. We can go over the top rated answers, but we can also see all of the answers if you want to actually do that. You click down here. The other thing is once you've ended the lesson, you click on end lesson and you will get a reports page. And so I can also access this reports page from my lessons where I click on that and I click on the lesson I want to take a, take a look at. You'll see right up here at the top, we can either present it again, we can edit it, or we can see the reports from when it's been done from a previous class. So I'm going to click on see all reports. And this is my favorite part. So this is how many times I've done it. So I'm going to go here and click on this most last, most recent one. We can see the number of students that were in the course. And um, these are all made up students for doing our um, training. And we have 100% uh, participation. What I want to show you is an example of one of my previous reports. So here you can see um, an example of a previous uh, report from students. And I want you to just to see that you can really well, you can just in a quick glance, see the participation of your students and how many completed your warm-up activity or this formative that you've done in CuriePod. And you can also see which questions they answered and which ones they didn't. So we have one student down here that chose not to answer a fourth question. We have here your lesson summary. Most common understandings. Students understand that plastic pollution is a significant problem affecting marine life and ecosystems. So CuriePod AI analyzes the results and tells you what the common understandings are and tells you what the most common misconceptions are. This is one of my favorite parts of CuriePod is using these open-ended questions. So the next part of it also says, gives a, re a recommendation for what you could do next, right? This action item create a class collaborative hanging art piece using recycled plastics. But then it has a list of students who, based on their formative from this CuriePod, who needs help and who did great. So this is fabulous for keeping track of data and um, formatives to be able to provide differentiated learning. So this is one of my very favorite parts of CuriePod. In addition, what you can see on this screen is that besides having your summary, you can click on individual students to see their answers for each of the questions. And you can click on activities. If you had multiple activities, they would be lo located right here. So again, this is my favorite part of CuriePod. Okay, this time it's going to be a model. Drawing, so we click on drawing. We're gonna give them five minutes to complete their model or their drawing. And afterwards, we'll have the participants vote on which model they think best represents um, the question that's, that's asked. And the voting duration will be a minute and a half, and I'll explain what that means. Okay, so under voting title, please vote for which model you think best represents the carbon cycle and plastics. Okay, so here is, I'm gonna just grab the question I used previously in the class. Okay, here's our question. Draw a thinking model with arrows that show what happens to a plastic bottle after it is empty. Draw the carbon cycle as it moves between the biosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and atmosphere. And we're gonna click present. So now, Students should be in this pin. Next, again, I have to click go. We, it's often easy to forget to do this. And so you have the option again, if you want to do a QR code by clicking down here on this person, or you can click on, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to do the green arrow because I don't use cell phones in the classroom. So then I click green, it says ready. And now it will present on the student slides and the students have five minutes to draw their model. As you see here on the icon, it reminds us that 
you can filter and moderate inappropriate responses in the moderation tools. You can check box when you're creating this, um, whether you want to review the responses before you show the students. This is how students screen would look. We would enter the pin. And then next students will type their real name, which you will see as a teacher and an auto generated nickname will come up. And now this is what it looks like when you have a screen for a whiteboard and for drawing. Okay. Okay, so once students have submitted their drawings, in this case, the five minutes was a good amount of time. And so we're waiting on the last 30 seconds, but I look in my classroom and I see everybody's finished. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it. And what will happen next is we'll get to either see the drawings of the students or to vote. And so what we're gonna do is see these five drawings and now vote. And so again, I'm gonna click on this green button right here and I'm gonna click go and we're gonna see what happens when I flip over to the student side. So now the vote's gonna happen. Please vote for which model you think best represents the carbon cycle in plastics. And now students are gonna see a series of images two at a time and they can say which one they think best fits the carbon cycle with plastic in their own opinion. And you click on the one that you think is best following your understanding. Okay, let's see. So this one goes from, right, I'm gonna go with this one. Now we finished. There can be up to 100 when you have a class of a 30. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to this teacher section and now we can see that with the votes, which one um, won the votes, it came in second and came in third, right? So we can click on here and see that this one had five votes for being the most accurate. And you can ask students why they may or may not have voted for that one. There we go. And then we can also do that for third place and find, get feedback. Go to the word cloud. And on this word cloud, we're going to create a word cloud activity. And for instance, we can type in there um, what comes to mind when you think of plastics. Oops, and I should say here, think of plastics, question mark. How have you used plastics today? Right. And so now over here, you'll see that the students are going to have one minute to answer the question. They're going to put in three words, so three different answers, and then we'll get to see their word cloud. So I'm going to now act as a student, and if I go to open a new tag tab and I go to curie.live, and I'm going to put in a code. So that code is 630417. Okay, and you have to put in your real name. And the CuriePod will generate a automated nickname. So in my case, I got the words kind fish as my nickname. And as a teacher, you will see their real name, but all the other students will see the nickname that CuriePod generates. Okay, and now students are waiting for me to go ahead and present. So when I go back to my teacher page, which I'm here and I click on present, we get this screen and I can choose how long they have. I can add time or take away time. And right now you can either click on this button to get a QR code. Instead, I am just going to get started because I don't have students have phones in their in their in the classroom. So I click that green button and it gets started. So now if I go back to the screen where the students are, what comes to mind when you think of plastics? Now we can put in our answers. I have a few that I had students, I the students previously generated in my class for the same question on a carbon cycling unit. So I'm gonna grab that and let's see. They said toothbrush and someone said plastic bag and someone said everything. Okay, I'm gonna submit. 
So now we're waiting for that time to end. We go back to their teacher page. You can see that's going to end in another 16 seconds. So students have that much time to finish. If I want to end early, I can click on that red square. So now we want to show the word cloud. So from our students, we get to see all of these um, words that were created and the bigger ones of course are the ones that were said more often so we've got straws toothbrush water bottle we've got clothing everywhere oh legos grocery bags and we can talk about this as a intro to a unit for instance okay there are so much more to understand about curiepod from vocabulary meme ba battle which is a really nice one to uploading your own slides and adding these things in a vocabulary hustle that i really like and they even have some great uh, social emotional learning opportunities that you can use and if you're needing science literacy or any literacy they've got paragraph of the week and they've got some great brain breaks and would you rather i hope you enjoy curiepod as much as i do thank you for listening good luck <laughs>